I'm being recorded and I'm like, okay, how can I make my lighting better? Uh, but no, um, thank you guys, everyone who is from the Black Pod Collective side. As you guys know, my name is Anna Gogo. I'm the founder of Black Pod Collective and Black Pod Festival. And I'm super excited for this partnership with the Podcast Academy um, as an opportunity and a resource for us to kind of gain access to these great kind of conversations today. So for those who are not familiar, Black Pod Collective is the digital community for Black audio creatives and Black Pod Festival is our annual conference that will be taking place September 30th and October 1st of this year. Um, so I'm excited for what's to be learned. I think even my videographer on my team will actually be joining because he was like, oh my God, he has a Black Magic camera. So he's, he's probably gonna geek out and everything. So um, me on the other hand, who I'm still trying to learn the buttons on the camera, I am not at the point of the editing portion of it, but I know that this will be super helpful for our community as a whole. Um, so I'll go ahead and kick it over to Michelle. And next time I will not be in my car because I recognize I should just not plan anything the day of. That's right. We're planning on April 27th, but I'll just give a quick introduction and turn things over to our speakers. All right. The hardest part of every day is how long will the will this freeze for? Oh, it's really it's giving me a hard time today. <laughs> I am completely frozen. I feel like I should do the Jeopardy music. Do, yes, do, you should do the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 yes. Do, do, do. I don't know why this is. My computer's been giving me trouble with this. So um, I'm going to attempt to stop the share. I may get kicked out, but it should still keep going. Wow, this is really not happening. Not happy today. All right, I'm gonna to have to say, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, well, and you know what? I'm just gonna do this verbally. That's the way it's gonna to be today. <laughs> um, I'm Michelle from the Podcast Academy. We are a community of podcasters that brings together everyone who does anything in podcasting, whether they're an agent or an executive at a network or someone who has a day job doing something else but makes a great podcast at night. We bring everyone together to focus on networking, master classes, mentorship, and then of course we have the awards, which we just did the AMBES. Oh, now I'm back. <laughs> um, we just did the AMBES, which were celebrating excellence in, um, in audio. So I won't show you my slides because it's not, um, you know, playing well with others today. Um, but I will let you know that um, I've got a couple of links that I will put in the chat box. You can check out our website. We've got lots of upcoming events, including our next DAWs workshop with the Black Pod Collective, which is coming April 27th. Look for details of that coming soon. And I will put the link here our events link. All right, thanks for bearing with my um, technical difficulty today. I'm gonna turn things over to Mary Plummer to talk uh, and to Tom McAndrew. So hopefully they will have a little more screen share happiness than I will today. Mary, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Hey, how are you? Here I am at my home office and um, I'm with Black Magic Design. I am a, a specialist with Fairlight Audio, which is part of DaVinci Resolve, although I use all of DaVinci Resolve. I was a picture editor for many years. I've also done music composing and pretty much anything that is necessary to create a soundtrack. I have worked at that capacity um, with a lot of different software over the years, and I have been working with Fairlight for the last five in DaVinci Resolve. And so I'm really excited to show you this resource and all of the different things we can do with it to create your podcast inside of an application that is free, by the way, <laughs> unless you want to use Dolby Atmos, and then it's just a, a modest fee. So just letting you know, 
pretty exciting stuff. I can't wait to show you guys what we can do and then you can uh, test it out for yourself. So I'll pass over to Tom. How's it going, Tom? Very well. Pleasure to be working with you. And uh, Anna and Michelle, thank you so much for having us. This is fun. Uh, my name is Tom McAndrew. I'm with uh, Dolby Content Relations based in Burbank, California. And uh, I do uh, content enablement for uh, all things Dolby Atmos. Um, just briefly, uh, Dolby Atmos started uh, 11 odd years ago in the cinema, like a lot of our technologies. Uh, Pixar's Brave was the first movie in Dolby Atmos, and there have been thousands since then. And we've gone from uh, the cinema to uh, feature films on Blu-ray and Ultra HD Blu-ray to streaming originals on services like Netflix, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, uh, Paramount Plus, uh, HBO Max, uh, live sports, uh, Dolby Atmos Music on Tidal and Amazon Music HD and Apple Music. Uh, and now here we are with podcasts. Um, there are several podcast services around the world that are uh, enabled with Dolby Atmos. Um, and here in the US, uh, Wondery Plus has been Atmos enabled and has lots of great content up uh, for the past uh, quite a few months. They they were our first partner. And uh, literally today, uh, Audible announced uh, Dolby Atmos support with about uh, 40 uh, audiobook and um, uh, other types of content available uh, right at launch. So that just happened today and we're really excited nice. about it. And we want to talk about uh, podcast creation in Dolby Atmos. And so, uh, Mary, please take it away. Absolutely. So this is exciting. Let me uh, thank you, Tom. And I will have you, Tom will be watching the Q&A and uh, kind of see what might come up. If you have questions about some of the things I'm going over, he might jump in. Otherwise, I'm going to give you a nice overview of um, DaVinci Resolve and especially the Fairlight page for creating your podcasts and mixing and mastering. Um, and I'll have Tom give you a little primer on some uh, Dolby Atmos when we get closer to that section. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I have a slide, I know. <laughs> we love slides, right? Okay, there we are. There's the slide and I will hide me for a second. Okay, so what you see here, DaVinci Resolve 18, that is the current version of DaVinci Resolve. If none of you have heard of it, this is the software from Blackmagic Design. Um, and let's go ahead. And what makes DaVinci Resolve unique, it is a full post-production platform. So basically you can do your editing, whether it's really quick editing for visuals, or you can also do full nonlinear editing. As you can see here, Jen looks a lot like a nonlinear editor. It is, you can cut trailers, you can edit, you know, entire feature films, documentary series, whatever it happens to be, everything is built into this. We also have the color page. Notice this is the next step with uh, DaVinci Resolve. If you're gonna do your color grading, you could do that in here um, as well. This is where a lot of Hollywood and um, professional shows all over the world are doing all of their color grading is right in the color page of DaVinci Resolve. Um, we also have our fusion page, which is for visual effects, 3D compositing, that sort of thing, all done right inside the same software. And then of course there's Fairlight, which I'm missing my Fairlight page. Wait, I'll show it to you in a second. But this is what, uh, one thing about me is I'm not great with slides. Yeah, let's try that again. Let's go up to my Fairlight side. I was saving the best for last, I think. So here it is, the Fairlight page. And this is what we're gonna be working with today. So it's a full DAW built right into DaVinci Resolve. So some of you are probably going, wait a minute, this is about podcasts. What's all the stuff about editing and visuals and everything else? Well, all of that happens to be in the same software as well. These are just different pages. So rather than having to go to different applications or do round trips back and forth, you're always in the same application. And so the Fairlight page is where we have our full digital audio workstation. And that's what we're going to be looking at today for doing podcasts. And I'll show you a nice uh, an overview of a lot of the different things we have built in. And then you'll just have to try it for yourself. <laughs> So, and we do have our consoles right here. We have a small, this is one of our desktop consoles and that's running the Fairlight page. Uh, you can do everything with a mouse and keyboard, but you also can use the consoles. Right here, just a really fast overview. Like I said, keep the slides short. Um, DaVinci Resolve is professional video and audio editing tool. Um, high quality node-based visual effects, HDR color grading, and then multi-channel audio recording, editing, and mixing. So thinking of the Fairlight page, because this is about getting to know a DAW, this is it. So professional recording up to 192K, 
Um, you can, so whatever um, resolution for your recordings you need to do, generally we work in 48, 41, but whatever you need to, you can. There's a timeline grid for editing, time code and music. Uh, you can adjust pitch, speed and EQ control on every clip. Um, sample level editing and native Fairlight effects. Voice isolation dialogue leveler. Those are new effects that you can use that are specific to working with dialogue. We have a sound library and a uh, Foley sampler for sound effects editing, built-in EQ and dynamics on every track. We have comprehensive clip and track-based automation. And of course, we have full Dolby Atmos integration for mixing and delivering your show. And that actually will work um, and like I said, you can even monitor in Dolby Atmos or binaural and create renders as well. I'll be showing you that. Um, now, when it, just real quickly, so you know, almost everything that we're going to do, almost everything I'm going to show you all works in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So I'm not trying to sell you anything. There is a free software. You can record your podcast. You can mix them up to a 7-1 surround. You can do all sorts of things. All the plugins, all of those things will work in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So if you want to just get started in um, after you've watched this um, show and you want to get tested out and see what it's like, it's free and it's and there is no catch. You won't be billed later. It's just free. There is a paid studio version and to use the studio version, that is that is what would be necessary to use um, the Dolby Atmos tool set um, and also the voice isolation. But anything other than that, you'll be able to do as far as audio goes in the free version. So um, we do have a set of free training books that also come with it. You can download those right from the DaVinci Resolve or Blackmagic website. I'll show you right where that is. So we have free resources for learning. You can get certified in DaVinci Resolve. Um, and let me please get out of these slides, okay? <laughs> so this, by the way, is what I'm talking about. This is the Fairlight page. All right, so you can get certified in Fairlight. Let me bring up my camera. You can get certified in DaVinci Resolve and you can do every type of work you can imagine for sound, you can do it in here. So we have, like I said, all those tools are built in and I'm gonna, we're gonna dive in and start working with those now. Um, but it's worth you know, just pointing out that you, know, you can do something as crazy as, here is a Dolby Atmos example. And this tools, and I will come back to this, I promise. Um, but this is some of our Dolby Atmos tools that we have. Whether the soundscape sits the mood right. of the scene. So depending on, like I said, what we want, what you're doing, we have the built-in tools and everything else. Um, now let's back this up a little bit. This is looking at Dolby Atmos. Now let's jump into um, the Fairlight page for something else. I'm just going to switch projects really quickly. And I'm going to go to this one. I have several projects here um, with a lot of different examples. Now, in, instead of a Dolby Atmos project, this happens to be a timeline that has, I have a stereo and a 5-1 mixing going on. And so that's something else you can do. You can just uh, create your mix, record everything, and then decide how you want to finish that later. And of course, all of the busing, everything you would do for your mixing, you can do right in here. And again, we'll come back in here and look at it with some more detail, just pointing out that all of that sound design, all of those things you normally would do for your podcast, you can absolutely do that here. And let's back this up. I'm looking at the finishing you know, at the end when we do our final mix and delivery. Well, let's back up a little bit more. I'm going to go all the way back in time to a you know, the early podcast, right? Here's a podcast in DaVinci Resolve. And if you look, this is what it looks like. It is just an audio clip sitting in a timeline. This is a finished uh, vintage, I'll call it vintage podcast. It's already been mixed. Um, the music, you know, this is from a few years back. You know, it starts with the music and this this is back when the podcasting was more in the interview stage and it was a lot of you know several people on phones or doing interviews and it was all mixed together was you weren't quite in la yet you were, i don't know what you're talking about right and so there's the voices now what can i do with this well i can adjust the levels a little bit but actually you know once everything has been baked together in a final mix it's a little bit harder to go in there and take it apart and make it sound better or fix it or do different things with it so you know ideally as you're creating a podcast you probably know this already you want to separate all your elements and end up with something that's really good but still have all of those separate elements to work with so let's back up even further i'm just going to start with um let me go back uh, an empty project for example there we go. I have, uh, in fact, I will make an empty project myself. 
there. A new empty project with nothing in it. So where do you start when you're working with DaVinci Resolve? And, and like I said, this is the DaVinci Resolve, the DAW. This is the Fairlight page. If you look at the bottom, and forgive me, but I'm going to turn on a little flashy cursor so you can follow my mouse easier. I'm going to come down here. And if you look across the bottom, this is how you change to the different pages in DaVinci Resolve. As I mentioned, this is a full post-production um, software. So you can start with the media page to import your media if you needed to. The cut page is one place that you can edit picture and sound together. We also have the edit page. Again, I'm just walking along the bottom here. The edit page is where you can access, um, you know, edit everything in a traditional nonlinear editing way. Everything from multicam features, shorts, trailers, you name it, you can edit here. This is that fusion page I mentioned. And you notice as I go, I'm not really changing anything. It's always the same timeline. All we're doing is a different um, different process. So whether one person's doing everything, good luck with that. Or maybe the, you, know, you have different people working within the same building or on the same project, you're just moving from one portion of your, um, your post-production to the next, basically. Now, obviously the visuals aren't as important when it comes to, um, working in podcasts. So we will focus over here, like I said, on the Fairlight page. And of course, the last step would be the deliver page, which is over here, the very last one. And this is where you can choose how you're going to export out your final project. You can also do it right from the Fairlight page. And I'll be showing you that as well. So at the moment, I have an empty project. Now, um, just taking a quick look at this, you'll see that this is going to be the timeline. I'm going to go up to the media the media pool is where we store everything. It would be the same media, whether you're editing picture or whether you're doing your sound. And at this moment, I'm in an empty project that has nothing in it. So just to show you, you know, how do I start? Well, one of the things you can do for starters is, let me see if I can bring up a finder window. There it is, is I can bring in um, some media. Now, like I said, so a couple of details about DaVinci Resolve real quickly for you is, again, Almost everything I'm going to show you today works perfectly fine in the free version. Like I said, you can do a record, you can edit, you can do your final mixes, 5-1 mixes, stereo, um, all of that right here in uh, the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Everything I'm showing you right now um, works also on Mac, Windows, or Linux. So depending on what kind of system you have, it will still work. The, the Sadly, the computer I'm using right now, this computer is a like 2017 iMac. It's not even an iMac Pro. And I'm still able to do all of this work on it, you know, for this uh, demonstration. So it's pretty cool. So let's say I want to bring some media in. Well, I can just go in like I would with anything else. I can right click and I can import things in. Or I can go through some menu and import things in. Or I'm just going to grab this folder right here that has some sound effects that I want to work with. I can spill this open. It has all these different folders of sound effects. And I'm just going to grab that and bring that over. Now, if I hover over my media pool, it'll just dump all those things in there. And I'll end up with all those clips loose um, sitting in there, which would then need organized. Or I can drag a little bit further over here into my master bin. And what that will give me, let me do that one more time, into my master bin. And what that should give me was, there it is, my entire bin structure, everything I brought in, plus you know, all the clips have all now been sorted and ready to work with. So that's a really cool way to work. It just means just drag and drop and everything's in here. So maybe I'm getting ready to do a podcast. And these are some sounds that we already have. We have some music and we have some different things. And I'm ready to build it right here in DaVinci Resolve in the Fairlight page. I just did the hardest part, right? I just got something in here. Now I can start, right? Now, the way this works, if you're used to working with other DAWs or other software, is you might be used to a single session, and all of your things you do have to live in that session. Well, because DaVinci Resolve is also a nonlinear editor and deals with the entire post-production process, instead of one session, you have timelines, and you can have as many as you want, and each timeline is like a session, and you can kind of build those up as you go. So just for an example, um, I can make myself a new timeline right now. Um, I won't even give it a name. But now that I have a timeline, I can actually bring in some of these sound effects if I wanted to. Um, let's see, I have some nice drone sounds. Let's say I needed those. If I can just, you know, it's just drag and drop. You're just editing sound at that point. You're just bringing in your sounds and you're going to trim them, move them around, stack them, add them to different tracks. All of that stuff is exactly what you would do anywhere else. 
The difference is you're just doing it here. And you can also, um, in fact, I could select a group of these sounds. Let's say I can set uh, multiple sounds. I can bring them all in and dump them into one track. I can hold down the command or control key and it will now put them all into tracks that match that media. And so I can quickly build out you know, some basic tracks that way as well. So, and by the way, I'm looking at all of these things happening in my timeline at once, but you don't need to have things up that you don't, if you're not working with them. I can close my media pool anytime. I can hide my meters across the top. I can hide my mixer and I can just focus on the areas that I'm working with at that moment. Now I'm going to um, just show you a little bit with recording. I, I know that that's a big deal, right? We need to be able to record. So I'm going to jump into a different project, one that actually has a few things in it kind of a pre-baked demonstrational piece here. And I'm gonna go into do, 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 right here. And I'm, I need to record a title. I, I need to record some uh, a script. Let's say we have a short script. Um, it's the character of a talking computer and I need to, um, in space, and I need to record that voice piece. Well, I have this right here sitting here. All I did was select that piece of text. Now, one of the nice things about DaVinci Resolve is because it is, um, software that happens to be, um, you know, this is also is an editing software, then you can make and create text and even scrolling text and things right in the software. But I'm going to select this piece of text and just right click on it and say, hey, make me a timeline of that text. And I'll say voiceover and it will create that timeline. And now I have it right here. I called it voiceover. It's now called voiceover. Okay. Now what's interesting about this is I just made a piece of text you can actually see your, your video tracks here in the Fairlight page. All I have to do is show them. There's a little area right here called your, um, this is your view options for your timeline. I can actually see my video tracks and there is the piece of text that I have that I'm gonna use as a script. Wouldn't it be nice if I could actually see it? <laughs> if I come back over to my meters, one of the things we have is this viewer, which you can obviously make it as big as you want. Can make it much bigger. I can send that out to another screen if I wanted to. I can even pop it out and just have it as a floating window if I want to. And so what's great about that is I have something I can actually read to record, right? So that's step one is I, I know what I, my script is. Um, someone gave me this, I want to record it, but now how do I get in there and patch it? Well, it's actually really easy. I'm going to go to my mixer. I'll do it from the mixer because you know, the mixer is fairly self-explanatory. You have one channel. I have one track right now and one bus. That's it. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually turn off my automation so the bus isn't even there and made it even easier. I just have one track sitting here, right? And I'm going to call this Scratch VoiceOver so it has a name. Or scratch VoiceOver. That's the name of my track. <laughs> and the reason I did that was because when I record this, it will take on the track name, my recordings, unless I choose a different name for it, and I can do that as well. Now I want to record this. And so all I have to do is I have to choose, I have to patch this track. And so I'm going to select the track. So it shows up in my mixer. There it is. Right here, it says there's no input. I just have to choose an input for my track. And oops, one thing I want to change is I don't want to record stereo. I want to record this as a mono recording. So then I have more options for when I'm um, moving it around and things like that. It's only a single source. I'm actually using out the noise. I'm actually just using a little Focusrite USB box to bring in my microphone. And I've got my microphone sitting right here on the desk in front of me. So I'm going to change the track to mono. And now that that's set, I will come back over here, say input. And I'm going to just take that one channel from my microphone, patch it to this one track, and it's done. OK, I could have had this already preset, but I wanted to show you that it's really that easy to um, patch this and I can close it. Once it's patched, now I happen to be recording into the same microphone that I'm talking to you in. So I am gonna have to mute my mic, otherwise we'll be getting the sound come out and get some nice feedback. But that's not the kind of feedback I'm looking for today. So we'll go right there. So I did arm it for recording. And then all I have to do is start reading, okay? This is just standard recording. It's gonna go directly, it's gonna record it onto my system. And if I look at the media pool, it's gonna dump it wherever I happen to be, whatever, bin or I have selected, that's where it's going to go. So maybe I'll make a new bin. That's a, like a folder and I'll call this new voiceover recording. 
without a D. Or B there. So I have an obnoxious little folder right here. I can even change the color of that to organize it. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's make it blue there. So that's going to be for my recordings, except blue doesn't show. Yeah. So there we have it. All right. So if I spill this open, I will see my new bin um, for where I want to put that, my new recordings, and that's where I'm going to put that. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to now record this little bit of text. And all I have to do is hit the record button. It will automatically record to whatever track is patched. I can have as many packed patched tracks as I want. You can also, um, if I come over here to path settings, you can adjust your recording levels right here as well. So I'm going to do a quick take of this. Emiliana Newton. Yes. Philip Maida. Philip Maida. I cannot explain this discrepancy. The SUT is currently 9543454. There. So I just did my first recording. And as you can see, it's a recording. <laughs> Let's see how bad it is, shall we? Emiliana Newton. Yes. Okay. So, so I just recorded one take and notice it's named Scratch VoiceOver 01 because that's my first take of that in this track. Now, it turns out that that's the uh, producers, they want to change that. Somebody wants to make a change. They don't want the text to be that anymore. Well, I can change that. Here's the mind-blowing thing. I can change that right here. I can go to the inspector, which lets you look at information about anything you have selected, in this case, this piece of text. And if I inspect it, I can actually go in there and change the text from my DAW. Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change this so it says Earth Date. Oops. Earth date is March 22nd, 2103. That's just what it happens to be in the script. Um, so there we go. So now that I have that done and I can close my inspector, I've updated. Now I can record the new version. And to record that one, I would just record right over top of this again. Let me disarm it. Mute it. Record. Emiliana Newton. Yes. Philip Maida. Philip Maida, I cannot explain this discrepancy. Earth date is March 22nd, 2103. And so I can do as many takes as I want. And when you record takes, they go above each other. And then you can see those. If I look at my audio track layers, you can see that they sit on top of each other. And from here, you can create your comps. You can add your microfades and you can build out your final comp. So I wanted to make sure I showed you that recording is really easy. And I could make this scrolling text. I could put in paragraphs. I don't have to use text. I can read a script from anywhere. The bottom line is recording is recording. And you can absolutely do that right here in the Fairlight page. So let's look at what else we can do. I'm gonna hide my audio track layers for a minute. And one of the things, I'm just looking at the bullet points, my promised bullet points here. So I did the um, record files, I used a title. Let's look at um, just quickly balance and repair. So I'm, I have some other uh, timelines here that I can show you. Um, just real quickly, here is a starting timeline. I'm gonna hide this for a minute. This would be like a finished, mix right here. This is like a mix of a scene that's much better. It has all of those different elements in it, voice, sound effects, music. Um, and here I'm going to show you the same thing, but these are just the finished stems um, pointing out the fact that what is our goal as we get through our entire finished podcast? Obviously, most of you probably know this, but the goal is to not only have a mix that works well right here at the top, but also to have all the constituent parts. You have your voice uh, or your dialogue, you also would have your sound effects and then you would have your music and all those are kept separately um, so that you can deliver them as needed or change those in the mix. So that's without the sound, without the music and so on. And so um, you can create all of those right from within DaVinci Resolve. We'll be coming back to that in a minute. The original dialogue that you get is gonna be, let me come into here. Here's like some original dialogue that may have been recorded. And now we need to you know, split that into different tracks. That's something else we always have to think about is, um, you know, obviously when you're recording podcasts, you might wanna record multiple people at the same time, just on different mics, like you would if it were an actual scene, or you may be recording them one session at a time or one, one at a time, and then combining those and putting them together. You have the advantage with podcasts, right? Cause you're not working with visuals. So you can pretty much do whatever you need to to achieve your goal, which is kind of exciting and also leaves a lot of room for creativity as well. 
Um, generally, what we do is we would split the dialogue, which is incredibly easy to do, um, you know, just moving things into their, each other's tracks. We have all sorts of shortcuts and ways to do that. I like to break everybody into their own track and then, of course, change the color if needed. Um, once you have that set up, this would be called this the checkerboard edit. Every character gets their own track. Therefore, you can add whatever effects, plugins, EQ, whatever it needs to make their voice sound great you can do that on just their own track. And that's a really important step. Obviously we can do that right here. Um, one advantage we have too, is you can change the way you play this back. So I can change so that Ada. my playback is now um, scrolling beneath. As you can see, it's scrolling underneath here. So it leaves the playhead there. So I can really watch and listen and decide, you know, how are things working? Or I can put my playhead back exactly the way it was so that it, it will scroll across the page as needed. So depending on what you're comfortable with, you can absolutely do either one of those. When it comes to balancing your levels, we have so many different options. Um, there are meters literally everywhere. I'm gonna pull up my mixer for a minute. Um, there's obviously <laughs> meters on the mixers, right? There's meters over here to the left in your um, on each track as you play through. Any of your clips, you're going to see meters there as well. And we even have plugins that are meters. Let me just bring up a meter plugin. Um, this is one of our built-in plugins. And as you can see, I have a nice meter here. And so if I have a goal to balance out my levels, however I did those, um, that's super easy to do because I'm looking at a specific target, right? I want my dialogue to be in a certain place between, let's say, minus 10 and 15. Nice, healthy signal. In this case, it would be in the yellow. And by the way, you can also... Um, you can also zoom in on, you know, make the levels louder with shortcuts if you wanted to um, as you go. So there's so many different ways you can work, but I'm looking to make these levels healthy, but not unhealthy. So in the yellow, there we go. Um, that's one way that I can balance out levels. Like I said, looking at my meters, you could go through and manually do that. We also have things like auto normalization, showing you that across the bottom here. This is my ADA track. Let me just zoom in on that. I'm using nothing but a three button mouse, by the way, and that's just giving me the access to be able to zoom and move around really easily and fluid, which is nice. And in this case, if I wanna balance these out, let's just randomly make them very different. Let's say the performances were chopped up, but their levels are all over the place. It doesn't matter because you can select those. And again, I'm just using an arrow tool to select these. We have other tools, but this is one that might be comfortable and easy to work with right away. Um, you can even select a track and say and do a command A or control A. And what that will do is it'll select everything in that track, as you can see. Once I do that, I can bring up, just right click and bring up normalize audio levels. And that will let me automatically normalize those, meaning it will take the peaks, the sample program peak, and it will put set that to minus nine and all the other levels will fall underneath that somewhere. That's probably going to be pretty good for this. And so if I do it now, couple of things to think about. I clicked on that, but I did. I missed one thing I didn't point out. When you're looking at normalizing and you've selected multiple clips, you can do them relative. So it will treat it as though it's one clip or you can do it independently, which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna set it independently. Um, while I have my normalization open, I'm just gonna point out to you that you can also norm normalize to true peak. You can normalize to any of your loudness standards as well, including like a Netflix deliverable. So if you happen to have a finished piece that you wanna send out for, to someone, you can actually check it um, that way as well and normalize it to loudness. I'm just using the sample peak because I'm just doing a quick balancing. And now I'm gonna guess, let me move this meter over here. I'm gonna guess that this is in pretty good shape. Now, if I look at these levels, they're nice, healthy levels here. All right. So that's really easy, right? That's just balancing clips. You can also, of course, you can add keyframes. We have, uh, if you're not familiar with that, I'm sure you probably are. Um, everyone just loves adding keyframes. That would be drawing in the levels, changing the levels with clips like, for example, this one right here, which is a mess. Obviously you can see it's very loud. And let me move over here. This one's louder and quieter. So one of the things I can do is I can manually hold the option key and just add or alt. And I could just add some keyframes so that I can raise or lower levels. That's not a big deal. But you can also, if you use like our range tool, you can drag a little range and that will automatically let you 
adjust those levels as well or lower them as needed within a range. And so again, you have the tools you need to kind of modify the levels very easily. And again, and this is pretty manual what I'm doing right now, but it is effective and it does work. So let's look at some of the other things we have, other tools that we may have for, you know, balancing levels out. I mean, that's, this is the basics at the clip level to kind of balance them out, but let's see what else we have. Um, when it's convenient want... for you, Mary, we have a few uh, recording and editorial questions. Oh, sure, sure. Like of course. To field them. Okay. Go. So first of all, uh, Leon asks uh, about remote collaboration. Our show has three hosts in different locations. Can we use this software to record our show or would we only be able to use this in post? Oh, no. Uh, well, to record your show, we have, um, I've done workshops on remote collaboration. Um, we have some resources on um resources on that on the black magic or design page i'm not don't know if you're familiar with that if you just go into davinci resolve training um you'll be able to uh, i'm trying to think where the best ways to get this um we definitely have some resources and do some workshops on that um and basically remote collaboration i'll just jump out of here real fast is the remote collaboration is going to be um whenever you're working with your project your different projects you can work locally on your own system. You can work as a network, which means you're going to be working with um, people within your own building, perhaps on a LAN network. Sometimes people come in on a VPN, but these can all be shared projects, different people working at the same time. And then with the cloud, which I'm not actually signed into it because I wasn't ready to do this part today. <laughs> but yes, we have full um, cloud workflows where you can absolutely have multiple people recording at the same time in um, different locations. It's all about how you're saving and sharing. Um, and so I'm trying to think that information is definitely available if you if you kind of search through um, trying to think where you'll find it. Um, YouTube will have some things you'll see some resources on our web page as well. Um, but what let me go back to my uh, the project that I was just in for a minute. Um, and what I was going to mention is the way the cloud works is you're going to have your own local version of everything and you'll store it on a device and then it will sync with everybody else. So they will all have their own local version. And so when you record things, you just set it up so that those recordings automatically share or your best takes will automatically share with everyone else who's connected. So um, there's a lot of different ways to do that, by the way. It's actually, um, uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area, we can demo that really easily at the Burbank office. So you can come down and see that. <laughs> So great. And I'll, uh, I'll throw one more at you. Uh, Clinton shoot. asks, uh, is there any trick to stop clips from carving out the edges of other clips when moving a clip around to position it? I Absolutely. Have turned off for precise editing. Um, okay. So, you know what, let's just, let's, let me just show you another thing I was going to show you anyways. Um, do, 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 let's look at editing with, let's say music. Okay. So if I go to record, I've got another version of that timeline here. I've got some dialogue and I have some drone sounds because you got to have nice drones in space. Right. And here's some soundtrack pieces, um, that I want to work with. Now, when you go to trim things in DaVinci Resolve, and let me make this bigger and hide some other stuff. Um, there you go. Um, I can make it even bigger if I want to. But the idea is when you, whenever you trim a clip, it always shows you the entire thing. So that makes it really nice for actually seeing exactly what it is you're doing. Now your concern, it sounds like, let me put this back where it was, is if I were to take this clip and set it on top of that one and move it back, oops, is that what you're saying? It's like, oh no, I just covered that up. Couple of things about that is the default is overwrite editing, meaning that anytime you drop this on top of that, it is overwriting it. However, under the timeline menu, we also have layered audio editing, which is the other way you can do it. And if you do layered audio editing, you're setting things above each other in layers. And in fact, this is what makes this so incredibly cool is I can do crossfade from one piece of music to another and create a really precise crossfade on that. Let me just go to my audio track layers. I show this in the classes. This is part of the training as well as you can get in here. And, and all these examples that I have are part of our free training that you can download right away if you wanted to. So this will get let you crossfade between those. You can also create crossfades other ways um, by just drawing one in and making a crossfade. But this is how it's actually happening in layers. You just don't see it happening. And what's great about layers is as you overwrite them, and let me um, 
as you're putting one on top of the other, let me just make that a little bit. Um, you can actually see the waveform really well as also, let me just zoom in on the waveform so you can see a little bigger. And you can see right where those overlap each other because they become transparent. So it makes it really nice for when you're trying to align some things to see what's happening there. So that's just one more tool we have. Obviously, you can put your music on different tracks, but being able to just kind of draw it in and do a really nice crossfade and having all of that um, flexibility right there is really helpful. Um, so that is one way. The, so the big thing, I guess the short answer would be layered audio editing. Let me go over here and get back over. So that's just some music, um, overlapping some music. Um, and look, this is my layered edits right here. So, and then what's great is you can actually have transitions between clips as well. Let's just do that. Um, I'm gonna pull this off. If I overlap these two things, or just set them next to each other, I can also draw in a crossfade. I just draw that right there and go up to edit and tell it to crossfade under the trim menu. And it's gonna create a crossfade there unless I don't have the right amount of space there. Or if I, um, let me come over here and turn off my layer. There's my layer on editing. And also it has to make sure it has enough room on the clip to be able to do that. But you can draw those in, which is great. We have batch fades, which work really well um, to be able to do quick fades ins and outs right here, batch fades, where you can say, hey, you know what? I need to fade between all those clips. I just need a quick batch fade on some of these things. You could totally do that What either also either a cross fade or fade ins and fade outs. And you will get those seamless fades across um, I'm going to do fade ins and outs. Um, I would not do it on this. I would do it on my checkerboard edit. So let's change my timeline for a second. Let's go back over here. And let me just pick another timeline. There we go. Um, so let's say this has got my dialogue in it and I want to add some batch fades here. I could draw in a range and say, I want to drop batch fades on all those clips within this little range. And I can come up here to my batch fades, set them. I want ins and outs. You can use frames or milliseconds. I'll use frames, but it's gonna be short. We'll make them like little two framers, something like that, just so they're super short. And then I will just say apply and it will apply them on all of those different clips. And I can choose to overwrite what's already there or not. And again, all this works in the free version there. We just added crossfades to all the, or not, uh, not crossfades, but fades. There they are. Okay. Now there's uh, so many other things. I mean, I, I only have, you know, this one hour to show you stuff. So I'm going to um, just show you a couple other things and we're going to dive into um, the Dolby Atmos side of the Fairlight page. But I did want to point out that if you go to the help menu in DaVinci Resolve, you can also get here through our website. If you look at DaVinci Resolve on the website, you will see um, if I bring up training, this is all free resources. This is where you can download the free version immediately. Um, obviously, you would already have it here, but this is where you download. The there are training videos um, that include media that you could walk through and learn all of these different things, including what I'm showing you here. There's free resources for the Dolby Atmos integration um, and recording. All of those different th tools are all shown right here for the different pages. We even have our training books, the ones I showed you right there. You can download all of the, the book PDF, all the media for it. You can even take a certification exam at the end. And all of that is part of our free resources that are available for you. So I wanna make sure that you know that um, just working with the Fairlight page in DaVinci Resolve, this DAW is incredibly powerful and there's just so much you can do with it. I'm gonna show another example real fast of just another type of editing, sample level editing. So not only can you edit um, clips and timelines and sound effects, and we have entire sound libraries right here where you can go in and search for sounds and pull them up and you know audition them in your timelines. You can in index any of your other sound libraries and music and use those in here. Um, but what this will let me do is I can also get rid of, let's say a glitch, an audible glitch in this clip. There's my two pop, um, which I don't hear. This is a piece of music with a bad glitch right there.
Now that's a problem where you have a finished recording or you've done some work or you're archiving something and you've run every process you can think of and you still have this horrible glitch in here that you got to deal with. Well, again, Fairlight is pretty powerful. I'm going to hide my sound library. Um, and so I'm just going to zoom in here because I can. And I'm just zooming in on that clip. And look, I can zoom all the way into the sample level, find where that glitch is, which is obviously right there. And I can just draw that right out. Um, takes just a couple seconds and it's gone. So now I could play that back, um, zoom out, back up a little bit and it's gone. So it's just percussion now. And so I had created that piece of music with a lot of uh, percussion and I did a, a really weird mix on that just so that it would trick some of the um, plugins and things that are out there. Um, one last thing I want to show you before I jump in, because like I said, there's just so many things for editing. There's so many tools out here that you can use to build out your entire mix and everything you want to do is I did want to show you, um, we have our other tools right here, our track effects, just because those are newish and they're pretty awesome. And that would be right here. These are some track effects. These were brand new. Now, the voice isolation is one that does require the payment. You do have to buy DaVinci Resolve for that one. And again, if you do buy, decide at some point you're using a free version, you want to upgrade so you can do Dolby Atmos and use like voice isolation and things. It is $2.99. It's a one-time fee. You can use it on two systems and that we don't charge. There's no other fee after that. They've never charged for an update and we update constantly. So um, that's just a one-time thing, but it's not required. I am going to show you one of the new features that uses that though. And in this example, this is noise. This is where your sound is, something's really wrong with it. We have built-in plugins that you can use to fix things and work pretty well for hum removing and for noise and stuff, but nothing like this. This one uses AI. So I'll just play this part. Crowd noise, traffic, aircraft, explosions. All right, so there you can see some pretty big problems with the sound sometimes. And I have seen this work with sounds where people are having a, a jackhammer or wind blowing on their microphone really bad. And it's actually uses AI to um, basically isolate the voice, just like it says right here. So I, all you have to do is, I'm going to go back to my mixer. I'll show you that way to do it. There's several ways. You could put it on the clips or you could put it on the track. I'm going to put it on the track right here, voice isolation. I'm just going to turn that on. This is what the voice isolation looks like. And now when I crowd hit, noise, traffic, aircraft, explosions, right? And so I'm just turning that on and off. So it works really well for that sort of thing. It also works for like, this horrible recording. This is me recording something low on purpose and then cranking up the fan. Cause I've always said that if they're, if aliens land and want to have an interview with somebody, the recording level is going to be like this, right? Aliens, zombies, dinosaurs talk, whatever it happens to be some extraordinary thing happens. You know, that the levels are going to be for whatever reason, it's not going to be in a recording studio, right? So it's going to be out on the street and you're going to have something awful to work with. So anyway, this is really recording bad. Level with the fan. Is very low. And this is me hitting the fan. And like I said, I could turn on the voice isolation um, on that track as well. In this example, okay. the recording level. And as you can see, that's there. Now, anytime you add, add effects to tracks or anything like that, you can bounce those effects. You can cache those effects. I could spend an entire hour just showing you all the effects that come with um, Fairlight in the free version that you can use to do all kinds of sound design and exciting things like that. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is jump in. Um, just for the interest of time, I'm going to jump over to Tom, who's going to give you just a real quick mention about the Dolby Atmos. And I'm going to just show you some of our Dolby Atmos integration for mixing. And, and hopefully, you know, this will just get you interested and excited about some of the things you can do right here with Fairlight. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Mary. That's great. And, uh, and I swear I'm not saying that just because you're here, but I love Resolve. Um, it's really intuitive. Uh, the RTFM factor is super low and it's, it's my tool of choice for doing personal editorial projects. So I've, I've become a big fan. Um, so some of you working on different genres of podcasts may be thinking, well, why do we need Dolby Atmos for podcasts? And, you know, I'll be the first to admit it's not, yeah, uh, you know, you wouldn't use Dolby Atmos for, as I say, the type of podcast that's two drunk guys sharing a microphone in a garage, but mm -hmm. for 
audiobooks for narrative fiction with sound effects and music and multiple voice actors, uh, nature documentaries, true crime, genres like that can actually really benefit from an immersive mix. Um, and like I said, Wondery Plus and uh, as of today, Audible are uh, Dolby Atmos enabled with lots of content up in the services. But even uh, studios that don't yet have a path to distribution in Atmos are starting to stockpile uh, Atmos content like uh, Q Code, Kurt Co Media, National Geographic. They know that Dolby Atmos is coming to their preferred uh, podcast platforms. And so they are mixing and preparing uh, in Atmos now. So that's, you know, that's why we're uh, doing this evangelization. Uh, and before I toss back to Mary, I will also say, um, if you want to hear some examples of Dolby Atmos podcasts, I'm going to put a link to our Dolby XP mobile app in the chat. You can download that and listen to all kinds of great uh, sample content. Fantastic. All right. Thank you, Tom. And so I'm just just pointing out to you, a lot of people will be like, well, if you're doing one of those full on um, narrative scripted podcasts that has all of the different, you know, you would mix your dialogue, you would mix your sound design, you would do all that stuff just like you would with picture, except you have a lot more flexibility because your care, your audience is now in the room so the people can move all around them. And there's things that you can do differently than when you're in a theatrical environment or watching on television where the dialogue is generally locked in the center for obvious reasons. Now, I did want to point out people are like, well, wait a minute, this, this mix is all set for stereo. And let's say you did something in stereo and 5.1, but you're like, oh, I'd love to make it Atmos. How hard is that? Well, if you are now again, all this I could do in the free version, no problem. If I wanted to move this to Dolby Atmos, if I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio, it's as easy as going in there and creating a bus. So right there under my Fairlight buses, all I'm going to do is right now I have my mains, my m &E, my 5.1 dialogue. Everything's all split up, all my busing, all my signals and sound is all coming out in a way that I can use it. And then all I would have to do is add actually two buses, one of them. <laughs> will be a Dolby Atmos master bus. And the other one would be a Dolby Atmos format like 712. This bus will then feed into my Dolby Atmos master bus. And then it's up to me to decide, okay, which objects, now let's look at this and figure out how, what things do we want to fly around in the room versus all around the walls like we did with our 5.1 mix. So it's actually incredibly easy to do all of that right in here. And I do you know, have workshops available for that. All of those are free as well. Like I said, we do have our resources here. Let me open up one of those, uh, some of that demo content real quick that we have from, um, from Tom here is you can import an entire Dolby Atmos mix or just by going to the Fairlight menu at the top and just saying um, immersive audio import master file. And when you import a master file, it will, will rebuild that. It can look at your a .atmos file or something else. If someone's brought one, if someone's given you one, you can actually break it open and work with it. But you can also just look at that Dolby Atmos file as a file. Um, and here I have a Dolby Atmos file here. We can generate an ADM file, which is a Dolby Atmos um, ADM for home theatrical, and that is a one format. It's audio only. It's a broadcast WAV file. And I happen to have one of those sitting here right now. If I make a new timeline from that, you will see that it's basically just a file sitting in a timeline. There it is. So this is what a master looks like. And when you bring in a master file, you can see it's badge Dolby. So it stays in that format. But I can totally create this and export it right from my Fairlight Mix. I can actually take it and say, hey, okay, I did this whole thing in stereo. Now let's make it Dolby Atmos, which I can totally do. You just have to break it into pieces. Um, you would bounce it and create this. But from here, what if I want to, I mean, obviously I'm not, moving this, around. I don't have a 7-1 setup right here, obviously, um, but I could listen to this in binaural if I wanted to. And so one of the exciting things we can do is not only can you make the mixes here, but you can also change it if you have that file and I can just change the format of that file right now instead of Dolby Atmos. And it's not it's basically changing how it's going to be played in the timeline. Therefore, the Dolby Atmos renderer, which we have internally in DaVinci Resolve in the Fairlight page, the internal Dolby Atmos renderer will actually um, make the adjustment for me. So I'm changing this to binaural, which is a stereo file, two channels. And if I say OK, um, and then change my track to stereo, I'm now listening to this in binaural. So if I had this. I could actually listen to this. I can even render it out as binaural right now from here. 
if I wanted to. And all I have to do to do that is I would just have to mark the clip. I mean, mark an in and out point on the clip and just say, hey, you know, let's go ahead and bounce this selected track to a new layer. And it will use the internal Dolby Atmos render to create a binaural down mix of this that I can then listen to, or I can give to someone and they can hear it in binaural from a Dolby Atmos master. So not only can we mix it, you can also monitor in any format you want. I'm about to open up an imported file and I'll show you the difference. Just wanted to point out how quickly I can. And while you're doing that, Mary, I'll just yeah. quickly add, um, in terms of, you know, we were talking about 7.1.4 different speaker counts. For sound for picture, it's generally a requirement that you have an actual mix room with a 7.1.4 speaker system that is home theater style 7.1 with four speakers basically in a box over the mix position. But for podcasts, you know, the budgets are a little tighter and so forth. Uh, mixing mm -hmm. binaurally and delivering uh, a podcast uh, in an Atmos master format um, from, you know, binaural monitoring is uh, totally legit. Excellent. Now that's really good to know because look at this, I just changed it to a 5.1. So if I only had a 5.1 room and someone needed that, I can turn this into 5.1. And again, but with the binaural, that's a really excellent way to watch or listen to things. I'm going to open up my other timeline that I had here, um, which is where I imported the same file. And here it is. Um, and what's great about this one is because I imported it, um, I have access to all of that information. So for example, let's just make these tracks a little bigger, but this has been, you know, whenever you import your Dolby Atmos master file, and like I said, if I was mixing it, I would have something similar. There are my tracks. These are just some of my effects tracks. If you look, there are lots of tracks here. Let's bring up my um, meters for a minute. You see that I have a lot of tracks happening here. But one of the things that's moving is the objects. It's the things that are flying around. So if you ever were, um, whether you're mixing Dolby Atmos or you're, you know, changing things, or you're trying to plan ahead for Adobe Atmos, even with your podcast, just remember, it's if you were planning a 3D um, movie, right, you have to have some things happening <laughs> at the screen, right? Or in this case, you have to decide which things can be flying around and which would be just my composite bed. So you have a bed right here, which is going to be your primary, you know, your mix, your channel-based mix. And then anything that's not in that bed can then be fair game to be flying object up to a you have up to 128 um, channels that you can use in your Dolby Atmos Master, which is plenty of room. Let me go back to that. Um, those effects. Uh, let's find a couple of these effects tracks. Um, I can also find them down here in my mixer. All of these have panning automation on them. And if I want to see that automation, I can just come over here and let's not need that, but let's do that again. And I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to just show, here's my left, right panning. And that's showing you what that looks like. So if you were watching that on any of these, to moving around you, you can see this is the part that's been automated accuracy. to make these objects fly around, to make it a little bit more fun. Um, and then of course, we also have our space view scope, which will show you um, everything in, let's see, let's look at my selected items and you know, this will show you what's flying around and so, and so on. So I need to actually close that and reopen it, but it's actually, a, you know, gives you the ability to kind of see things in context with each other. But as you can see, any of these tracks, I can actually have them flying around and look at that. So, and I can change whichever um, panning I'm looking at at any time or whichever um, automation. Of course, you can do all of that automation here. So you can take any static object and automate it and make it start flying around the room. So I realized that, you know, as far as podcasts go, you know, who knows, anything is possible, right? It can be interviews, but it can be interviews with really interesting backgrounds. And if you decide to be immersive, you can absolutely go in there and take advantage of that. But you can also work small and just have, you know, a standard editing um, with your soundtrack and all of your different stems and things like that. And, so. and I'll just jump in and say, I, I spoke to one podcast mixer and one thing he loves about working in Atmos is he's kind of defining the audio, audio vocabulary for a show. He does mm -hmm. a, a true crime podcast where it's like, okay, we're interviewing the police detective and the perspective of the audience is they are in the audience of a theater and the detective and the interviewer are kind of up on stage, but then they wow. do a flashback to like a crime scene recreation. And now you're the protagonist or the, or the victim. So you're in the middle and everything is happening all around you. So you can wow, really use, that is, mm -hmm. yeah, you can use the sound field to sort of dictate how you want the listener to feel or what 
you know, what mental space you want to put the listener into. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's really exciting. I think the biggest thing is because you don't have those limitations, like I said, with video, you kind of have to have your audience in the front, right in the center, whereas you can easily have two people sitting next to each other and actually feel like they're sitting next to each other and your audience member is right there among them. So there's just unlimited possibilities. I'm so excited about the entire um, idea of the podcast space and just what people are able to do and just how exciting this is as another form of entertainment and communication and whatever comes next. So yeah, you don't have the tyranny of the screen. You know, the, the sound field can be whatever you want it to be. And if you go to the Dolby XP app or you listen to some of the content on uh, Wondery Plus and Audible, you'll see, you know, there are no rules and there's lots of equally valid ways of uh, creating, uh, creating Dolby Atmos mixes. Mm -hmm. So I just actually imported this in again from scratch, just so that you guys could see that I could import uh, Dolby Atmos master file right here. And I'm going to bring up my space view scope. There it is. Um, to He's show the different objects. Somehow I have done something that's made it mad, but. <laughs> and Michelle, do we have a hard stop at uh, five specific or. Based. No, there's no hard stop. It's just me. So. Okay. <laughs> Showing more slides. So, okay. so like I said, there's so many things. So uh, the biggest takeaway I would say is that you have so many plugins. I mean, I just can't show it all in an hour. I spend, you know, a five days doing a class, but the book is there and the resources are there and you can just dive in. And like I said, I, if I was starting with a podcast right now, it'd be, I, it's just unlimited creativity and all of the different things you could do. And I know I could do it with this tool. So that makes me excited, <laughs> excited about it too. So. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, knock out a few uh, other questions here. Sure, um, please. Uh, Cl Clinton asks, uh, is something mixed in Atmos seamlessly compatible with standard playback? MP3 format, RSS feeds, no second version or feed required. Um, so you're not delivering an MP3 for um, iOS devices. You're you're using the uh, Dolby Digital Plus codec. Uh, the codec is just, you know, the bucket that carries the mix. For Android devices, it's uh, our new generation codec, uh, Dolby AC4. Uh, for living room devices, it's also a DD plus, but, um, but MP3, no RSS. Uh, yeah, we have worked, you know, out the mime types to deliver a Dolby Atmos master to a streaming platform for encoding to the different codecs. Um, but it, you know, it's a little bit kludgy right now, these days, uh, Wondery and Audible are taking directly uh, Dolby Atmos master files and they're encoding them for the different, uh, distribution platforms. Um, no second version feed required. No, um, Dolby Atmos, that's kind of the beauty of Atmos is it's not defined by a speaker count. You know, it's not like Atmos 714 or Atmos 5.1. It's just mm -hmm. simply Atmos and it scales to whatever the playback environment is, including two channel or binaural. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, relative file sizes versus other formats. Uh, Dolby Atmos master files are pretty big, um, because, you know, it's however many channels of, you know, tracks that you're uh, using for beds as well as objects. So the master files can be kind of big. The encoded streamed file, uh, DD plus is typically 768 kilobits per second. Um, and AC4 is, uh, several orders of magnitude lower than that. Um, it's not something that you as mixers and creators have to worry about in terms of bit rates. It's really handled on the uh, streaming platform side. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. And I, I did want to mention that we do have, like, if you're doing your playback here, we can also, if you're playing back a master file, or if you're mixing Adobe Atmos master, you have, anytime you have your buses, you always have the ability to monitor whatever you need to as you're listening back. So you can monitor in stereo, you can monitor in binaural live while you're playing it back. So, to, so you know, you're not limited to if you're working in a studio and then you go back to your place to tweak it or work on something, you absolutely can just switch over back and forth between binaural and uh, Adobe Atmos. but. So. Right. To the point about, do you need additional versions? No, you don't. But while you're monitoring your mix, you, you may want to check, okay, how does it sound in full Atmos? How does it sound in stereo? How does it sound mm -hmm. in binaural? Just make sure that it's a quality experience for each of the uh, monitoring mm -hmm. environments. Right. Just like you would do with music or anything else that you might want to release into the world. <laughs> exactly. So any other questions for... Me. Um, I think that's most of the questions in the Q&A. Let's see here. Uh, Bree asks, um, are any of the uh, DaVinci Resolve features available for iPad? Um, let's see. At the moment, that's a good question. At the moment, the cut page is on the iPad. So um, the cut page, which is, this is not the right 
<laughs> this is not the right thing. I know the cut page and the color page are on the iPad. So that would mean that you could do some of the editing um, in visual editing. You could edit some sound together easily enough on the iPad. I, I, I regret to say I have not yet worked much with the iPad yet. That's on my <laughs> list for the next couple of weeks, but I haven't gotten there yet. But you guys release new features and versions pretty quickly, so I, I yes, can understand it's hard to keep on yes. top of it. Yes, we do, <laughs> but yeah. in a good way. So. Yeah, and a follow-up question. Uh, I suppose binaural would get around those issues. Um, so Dolby Stance is binaural is awesome for mixing. Uh, binaural is not great as a distribution format because, you know, what binaural does is, you know, tricks your brain and when you're wearing headphones to think things are in front of you and behind you, above you and all that. Um, and it's using, you know, phase and delay and all kinds of trickery to create a binaural experience on headphones. Mm -hmm. And so binaural is cool for headphones, but it's only cool for headphones. The experience can kind of break if you're listening on a smart speaker in a living room, in a car. Yes, Dolby Atmos is in cars. Um, so it's so so Atmos decoding will decode to binaural if you're listening on headphones. So the you know the mobile devices are smart enough to do that. But as an actual uh, Dolby Atmos distribution format, like to pre-bake into binaural and then release basically a stereo, it's not it, you can do it, but it's not something that Dolby recommends. Right. Although one thing I will say, real world is you know we do get people who have clients. Um, let's say someone's doing all the the mix and Dolby Atmos mix or mastering in. Um, here in California and the director or client is in New York and they're not so savvy uh, and they don't necessarily have Adobe Atmos room to listen to something in, that, but they have the edit. And this is where our collaboration works. So the edit was done in DaVinci Resolve. So they basically will make a binaural mix, drop it into the timeline. And then the, the director over in New York, who's in a shared project, can then watch it with their headphones in whatever room they want to and get an idea of how that mix is going. So it, it is helpful for things like that. Yeah, that's a great point. When I did a uh, a webinar on the production of uh, Hamilton on uh, Disney Plus, the actual stage production, we were told that uh, the producers actually did remote review that way. So they listened <laughs> binaurally in a different studio. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can get at that point. That was, <laughs> yeah, and that was you know, during the peak of the pandemic and everything yeah. and nobody mm -hmm. was face to face. So yeah, it was a great solution. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see one more question. I think this got lost. Is there is there a convolver as part of any of the re included resolve audio effects? I haven't been able to find one in the list. I would be using it for impulse responses. Um, no, not at this moment, but you can if you have um, your own if you have other plugins like right right now, you know these are the plugins that come with it. It's a lot of cleanup and fix plugins, a lot of sound design plugins to make things sound different, to change a voice, to make it sound more distorted or whatever you might want to do. Um, but if you have your own VST plugins that you're already use, um, you can obviously include those on your system and then you can access those here and use those with um, DaVinci Resolve. So. All right. And I think uh, that is all of our questions. Excellent. So this is fun. <laughs> Thank you both to Mary and Tom. I learned a lot about things I truly know nothing about. Um, I put a little exit survey poll in the chat if people would take a moment to fill that out. And if you're interested in finding out more about the Podcast Academy, there's a link about our membership and a 50% off discount code. Uh, and we have another of these DAWs sessions coming up in April on April 27th. So we'll see Tom there again. Thank you to our speakers and have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye.